What's up guys, Chasing Up New Year's Revolution down here in the cave for the first official show from the set. <laughs> That's right, the living room set. Honestly, this um, this has changed this whole room. The, the, the room dynamics right now are so cool, uh, so good. And it's because of this, this TV setup. I just love so much. Uh, we've been playing a ton of Atari down here. A ton of Atari. Um, River, you know, there's games right here on the table because, uh, you know, so River Raid again uh, is and was and continues to be my favorite game. It's all about high scores. Liam and I are competing against each other in high scores. I, I hit 16,000 the other day. I know that's absolutely minuscule in the uh, grand scheme, but you know, hey, whatever. It, it, it's fun. And uh, somebody gave me the idea of like. Uh, I guess live streaming uh, a movie down here, or what I what I what I'd like to do more than that is is maybe do a wrestling with the past kind of a reaction video. I'll watch it live here with you, um, and hopefully keep the volume down enough to where it doesn't really register anything, but that I could still hear it, and um, and just do you know do do like I do with wrestling with the past, give you the match results, but you'd get more of a live reaction of, of uh, the stuff that's going on. So we might do that. Uh, <clears throat> before we do uh, a Mount Rushmore show, or my Mount Rushmore show, uh, I picked up yet another, <laughs> yet another VCR. Uh, look, I, it's, it's kind of an obsession at this point. Um, if I see them, and they work. I have to get them. This is a Quasar uh, forehead, and um, it's kind of a newer one. I think this is probably in the 90s, maybe like 91 or so. I think the foreheads were were a little newer. Yeah, there's there's no. Uh, oh my goodness! This is 1998. Holy cow! <laughs> This was manufactured in 98. That's awesome. Well, not really, but uh, you know, probably. Anyway, uh, the only way to buy these is cheap, okay? And thrift stores are getting stupid, as usual. Everything is getting stupid. Uh, Goodwill sometimes has these priced at, like, 20 bucks. Um, certainly, Savers is, is now ridiculous. They'll be pricing these at $20. This one was $6.99. And Goodwill has the, uh, you can plug stuff in and, and to, to test it. So I plugged it in. I went to the, the, to the uh, media section, got a VHS tape, put it in. It played continuously. It didn't stop. I rewound. I fast-forwarded. And so I just assumed that this works. So for 7 bucks, I've got um, another VCR. Uh, not $7. $8 it cost me. You know why? Because, uh, and this isn't a full-on rant, because we're going to do the Rushmore, but why is every store asking me for extra money nowadays? Why is every single store asking me to round up? And they have some nonsense charity that, you know, I don't even know is legit or not. But, you know, every store I go to wants me to now round up my change. And the other day, I went to a store, I forget which one, and they asked me if I wanted to round up, and they didn't have a reason why. There was no charity. They just wanted me to round up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what that is anymore. I don't know. We're just different. We're just different. We don't. We didn't round up in the eighties. I don't know. I, look, I, I'll give money to you know if, if somebody needs some money uh, for a charity. I mean, I'll pick and choose, but I, I'm not. Uh, you know. I don't really like change anyway, but this isn't even change. I didn't even pay cash. It's it's on a card, so now I'm rounding up. It's just bizarre. I don't know who we are these days, but anyway, let's let's. Uh, so this this room is fun still. I enjoy it. Um, I have not watched a full on movie down here, um, but I will. And I think the first movie that I'm going to watch down here is uh, a VHS of Something Wicked This Way Comes. This is one of those movies that you forgot you ever watched as a kid. And um, I, I definitely saw it as a kid. But as a kid, I was just watching it for the, you know, the scary parts or just the memorable parts. I have no idea what the movie's about at all. 
And so I'm going to watch it for the first time as an adult and actually, you know, learn what this movie is about instead of just a kid who, you know, watches it for, you know, scary scenes or whatever. Um, and I'm going to do that down here. I'm going to do that down here. Oh, before I forget, the only thing I'm worried about with the VCR is there's no remote, which is common uh, in, in Goodwill. But there's no tracking button on the actual device. So, you know, this is a situation where you can only adjust the tracking with the Quasar remote. Um, so that's concerning. If, if the VHS has a tracking issue, I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But it, it's really just backup. It's, it's not... I have... Uh, two working VCRs now, and now a third. All right, the Rushmore, the Rushmore of of uh, Rocky, Rocky movies is what we're going to do today. My Mount Rushmore of Rocky movies. Uh, I I, you know, I've been uh, a Stallone. I was a Stallone fan, over the top. <laughs> the movie. Uh, but no, I was I was a I was an over the top Stallone fan when I was a kid in high school. Really, really a big fan of Sylvester Stallone. And I love some of his most ridiculous movies. Um, Oscar, I love the movie Oscar. Um, Cliffhanger is is awesome. Uh, uh, over the top actually the arm wrestling movie is just you know great bit of nostalgia. Stop or my mom will shoot. Okay, how about this? I had a stop or my mom will shoot Sylvester Stallone, Estelle Getty, uh, Stan D in my room in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, uh, I got it from a video store. I got it from a video store. So I had this six foot tall, big cardboard Stan D of, uh, of Stallone and Estelle Getty in my room. Chick magnet, total chick magnet. Uh, so I've always loved Sly, and of course I've always loved the Rocky movies. And so when I do my Mount Rushmore of them, these dogs are having a royal rumble right by the camera, and they're going to bump the camera any minute now. Guys, guys, go. Go on. Go fight out there. Go. Go. <laughs> they're kind of listening. Kind of not. Uh, this is a very all of my Mount Rushmores. The concept of my Mount Rushmores are are personal, very personal. These are not, you know, proven top fours. They are not popular opinion top fours. They are my top four based on my memories of childhood and and what I watched. So my Mount Rushmore of Rocky movies is going to shock all of you. Okay. So let's get right into it. I think knowing me and knowing the channel, you guys could predict uh, the first entry into the Mount Rushmore. And, you know, the Mount Rushmore allows me to identify these things without, without identifying a number one favorite. Because that's too hard to say what my favorite one is. But this one would probably be pretty close to my favorite. The first Rocky on my Mount Rushmore, my top four favorite Rockies, uh, Rocky Three. Rocky Three, no doubt about it, is on my Mount Rushmore because, uh, yes, it came out in or made in '82 or '80. I think '83. You know, Hogan was in the AWA, but by the time I got around to watching it. Hogan was Hogan, okay, Hogan was WWF World Champ Hulk Hogan. I didn't watch it in 83, I didn't see Rocky, I was, you know, uh, how old was I? I was seven years old, right? I didn't, I didn't see Rocky, when it, Rocky III when it came out. I probably saw it for the first time when I was like nine or ten. And so Hogan was Hogan, you know? Uh, so to see him in the movie was awesome. Mr. T... Uh, you know, I was al already well aware of, and uh, Mr. T was in WrestleMania 1 in March, 
right? And you got the A Team, and you got the Mr. T cartoon. So it's like a kid's all star game, Rocky Three. You got Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, you know, Mickey dying uh, is, is still difficult to, to watch. They're going to go right into the camera. Guys, guys, get out of here. Go on. Come on. Out. Missy, out. You're going you're gonna to bump the camera. <laughs> oh, welcome back. Hello. Glad to have you back. You guys are listening really well, just like the children. Mickey dying is awful, you know, in that one. Uh, you really hate Mr. T. You really hate him, you know, for killing Mickey, uh, for saying awful things. And I can't remember, I can't remember at the end of Rocky Three. there is no, like, Mr. T sees the light kind of deal. He's just, he's just a bad guy. I think at the end he's, like, getting the smelling salts and he's like, Ugh! you know, he's, so I don't think he was ever, Hulk Hogan, uh, like kind of turns good in that movie at the end of their big fight. Love it, you know. Uh, you know, Rocky press slams Hogan out of the uh, unbelievable, great stuff. And you know, you know, Rocky did that stunt. You know, you know, Stallone did that press slam himself. Rocky three, absolutely up there. Uh, all the toys that came out of that, the uh, the bop bags and the you know the the you know they start uh, the figures started. Great, great stuff. Then, uh, on my Mount Rushmore, okay, surprisingly for some, is Rocky IV. Wow! Rocky IV, I love so much. So much. The, the soundtrack alone, so good. I kid you not, when I was in the gym, <laughs> which, believe it or not, I did do pretty religiously uh, a, a while ago. About, uh, oh man, I probably haven't been back for in the gym for probably about six years or more. I, um, I pinched a nerve doing uh, ridiculous barbell shrugs. I wanted like these bowling ball traps. And so I was doing these stupid shrugs uh, with way too much weight. And I pinched a nerve in my neck somewhere and still have, you know, numbness in my pinky. So I lost a lot of um, strength on my, my left side, pack and, and, and bicep and stuff. So shoulder especially, wow. I couldn't do, um, uh, when I got hurt, I couldn't do dumbbell shoulder presses with 20 pounds with this arm. It, ju it would just fail. It was horrible. I digress. Uh, but my point was the, the Rocky IV soundtrack was like workout material. Because it was such a good, uh, it was such a good soundtrack, you know the the training montage and burning heart and hearts on or burning, I think it's burning heart hearts on fire yeah it's hearts on fire, um, uh, Kenny Log you know just just incredible, incredible music, and the music the, the music throughout the movie the the cutscenes throughout the movie the the flashbacks when when you know. Uh, Adrian says, you know, you can't win, Rocky. And he gets in the car and he drives. He's listening to all the music. He's shifting his car and he throws his... Great stuff. Great stuff. He doesn't throw his helmet. He throws his helmet in part three. But, uh... I think, yeah. But the, the car ride where he's just bumming and mad or that's the motorcycle ride. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the car ride, I think. Yeah. Uh, Apollo dying is just massive... Right and and how these things can happen, you know. The Rocky Rocky is always a movie where you absolutely have to suspend reality, take anything you know about boxing, and just be like, "Come on, you know, cut it out. Uh, we, we're not uh, we're not comparing this to real boxing. You don't do that." But uh, you know, so Apollo dying in this exhibition match just wouldn't happen in real life. How bad he was pummeled. Um, and then, you know, for Rocky to have to avenge the loss to, of course, a Russian, you know? And, and I think they probably could have capitalized on the Russian thing a little earlier in the 80s. But, you know, they got it for Rocky IV. And you've got Drago. And I just remember, like, the training scenes, the, tra the differences in training. You've got, uh, you've got Rocky, like, going back to, you know, 
just real primitive training. I remember he would he would lift that wheelbarrow like it was almost like a horse cart or, or something, this giant wooden barrel cart. And he's got all of his family in there, and he's he's lit in the trainers. And he's lifting. He's going, Aah! you know, he's lifting it up. And then you then you cut to. Um, Drago, who's like training in this high tech facility, and he's getting the steroids in his arm, and the blood drips down. Great stuff, great stuff. Rocky Four, absolutely 100 percent on the list. Uh, here's these two are gonna blow your minds. Uh, if you're looking for Rocky One or Rocky Two, it ain't happening. It's not on here. They're they're Oscar or Academy Award winning movies, sure, of course, of course. Some of the best movies of all time. But not in my wheelhouse for Rocky movies. Just not. I was too young. Right? I'll watch them as an adult when I watch the series straight through. Of course I go from the beginning. But you're not, uh, they're not going on the list. Uh, Rocky V. Rocky V. And I know that everybody craps on this movie because Rocky turns back to stupid. You know, it, it, well, you know, he, he, he becomes, you know, brain damaged again. And he loses all of his money. And he has to move back to the old neighborhood. He has to slum it, as, they're, as they say in the movie. But uh, I love it. I just love it so much. I loved Tommy Morrison. What a weird story there with that guy throughout his real life, his personal life. But uh, I loved watching... Because this is the era that I was actually watching um, a ton of boxing. And uh, Tommy Morrison was coming up the ranks on, like, the USA uh, fights and ESPN fights. And then eventually, like, HBO. Tommy Morrison was, like, a big deal. So it was it was awesome to see him in the movie, Tommy Gunn. Uh, the, you know, the training. Then, then you have, like, this. there's like a, almost like a pro wrestling you know, script going on with the with the Don King, you know, Don King esque promoter, as he uh, gets uh, Tommy Tommy Gunn uh, to turn bad, <laughs> basically. And there's no fight. There's no uh, all the fights. The the real professional fights are of Tommy Gunn. There's no Rocky in the ring. But we get the best, the best Rocky fight of all time. And that's it. In my opinion, the best Rocky fight of all time, the street fight between Rocky and Tommy Gunn. And the setup of the street fight is so good. You know, Rocky's at a bar, uh, Tommy Gunn and, and, and Duke there, I think it's Duke, walk in and they're like, you know, come on, you know, get whatever. And, and, then, and then Paulie says, you know, why'd you get out of here? And he pushes him. And, uh, and bam, you know, down goes Paulie. And Paulie's down, he's holding his lip, and Rocky's looking at him. And he just gives, like, that look. The, it's the same look from when Drago killed, uh, killed Apollo. He looks up at him, and, uh, you know, my ring's outside. Save it for the ring! Save it for the ring! No, my ring's outside, right? Wow, that still gives me goosebumps. And then they go out, and then Rocky starts the fight immediately, right? It's not some bogus street fight where two guys are, like, staring at each other, like, hit me, go ahead, hit me, come on, no, you hit me first. Rocky just comes out and, wow, and just starts swinging on him. Oh, it was so good. That that street fight, again, still gives me uh, goosebumps. I love Rocky Five. I just love it. I really do. I love it. I think it's so stupid. Um, I, the, the, the beginning where he's in the shower and he can't, you know, oh, Adrian, I can't. You can't, why? I can't stop my hands from shaking. Like, he's, he's, it's happening, you know, he's, he's losing his mind. And then when Paulie, again, when Paulie loses all the money, I thought I was doing good business. I want to kill the bum as much as you do. Uh, so... I love it. Rocky Five. Okay, the final on the Mount Rushmore of Rocky movies. Go ahead. Unsubscribe. Say all kinds of horrible things. I'm putting Creed up there, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Creed. Creed is on my Mount Rushmore of Rocky movies. Man, I love it. I watched Creed for the first time about six months ago, and it has knocked Rocky One, Rocky Two, and uh, Rocky Balboa off of the Mount Rushmore for me. I love Creed. I love 
Creed. I love the movie. I love the actor that plays Creed. Um, uh, Michael B. Jordan. Love it. Love the relationship between Rocky and Creed. I just love it. I love the modernness of it, right? They tried to do the fighting a little bit better. They've got like professional arenas and professional announcers. I don't know. It just seemed obviously a little bit better fighting choreograph, but Rocky training him, of course he doesn't want to at first. And then all the stuff with Rocky's health, you know, he's got, he's got cancer in this one, but you know, and, 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 and Creed, gets scared when he gets cancer and doesn't want to work with him anymore and then obviously comes back and then Rocky's still kind of training him as he's going through chemo and Rocky's getting gray and oh it's just it's gonna I haven't seen Creed 2 and I think it's gonna make me cry I don't know what happens in Creed 2 I don't know if they I, I don't think they kill off Rocky I mean they kill off Adrian you know in, in Rocky Balboa so she's gone I don't know Creed, I just thought was so good. If you haven't seen Creed, go you know go check it out. And I know there's a part two. I haven't gotten around to watching. I have it, um, but I uh, I own it, but I haven't watched it. But yeah, so that's my Mount Rushmore of Rocky movies: Rocky three, Rocky four, Rocky five, and Creed. All you movie purists are just going insane. I'm sorry to offend, but those are my top four, my Mount Rushmore of Rocky movies.